بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله This is the second lesson from our brief introduction to the Qawaid al-Kubra the Qawaid or principles uh, of Qawaid Thaqiyya the major uh, principles and we reach the second qaida, the second uh, principle, and that is al yaqeen la yazul bi shak o la yazal o la yarfa. Uh, so the second principle is that certainty uh, is not removed by doubt, and this is very important. For us to understand and benefit from these kawaid, these principles, because these principles, in fact, give you so much general ways of looking at the evidence and general ways of practicing your religion. They give you kawaid, they give you general principles that you can act upon and they help you. Uh, with giving you the proper understanding uh, for many masail, many issues that that you run into, by knowing and understanding these principles and having these principles to fall back on, they give you an important asas, an important asul. Uh, this asul or this qaida uh, is very well known, especially from the usul of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi rahmatin wasi'a and uh, this is known from uh, the principles that Imam Abu Hanifa espoused from the Quran what is the dalil for this qaida for this principle before we get into the actual principle and the meaning and some actual examples we just want to know what's the dalil so we're going to follow that tartib we're going to go with the dalil of the qaida then we're going to uh, give you uh, a definition and some examples so uh from the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in kitab al-kareem وَمَا يَتَّبِعُوا أَكْثَرُهُمْ إِلَّا ظَنْ إِنَّ الظَّنَّ لَا تُغْنِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Uh and most of them, they only follow van, they only follow doubt or suspicion or uh, their opinions. And verily, van does not benefit anything from the truth, meaning the truth stands as it is, and people's opinion do not define the truth, but yet the truth, the haq itself, is present, and people's opinion does not define the haq. And from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there is lots of evidence. From the evidences uh, from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, uh, in an authentic hadith, he قال إذا وجد أحدكم في ظنه شيئا فأشكل عليه فأشكل عليه أخرج منه شيء أم لا فلا يخرجنا من المسجد حتى يسمع صوت أو يجد ريحا. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said, and this and this is the left of uh, Sahih Muslim. He said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, if one of you believes, you know, he has this dhan, you know, this is his opinion, or he, he, he thinks, you know, it's not for sure, he thinks, it means it's muhtamal, uh, if he thinks that he has something, meaning he's past gas or something, he believes this, something that confuses him, that something has come from him, meaning passing gas, or not, then he should not leave the masjid until he hears a sound or he smells something. And the next uh, narration is going to really clarify that, uh, clarify for us. 
and really specify, especially with regards to the Salat. Uh, Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned about this hadith. He said, وَهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَصْلْ مِنْ أُصُولَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَقَاعِدَ الْعَظِيمَ مِنْ قَوَاعِدَ الْفِقْهِ وَهِيَ أَنَّ الْأَشْيَاءَ يَحْكُمْ بِبَقَائِهَا عَلَىٰ أُصُولِهَا حَتَّى يَتَّيَقِّنُوا خِلَافِ ذَلِكَ وَلَا يَدُرُ الشَّكْ طَارِئٍ عَلَيْهَا طَارِئًا عَلَيْهَا Imam Anoui said something very profound and very beneficial for us and this is what we're trying to articulate and Imam Anoui articulates it uh, beautifully when he explains this hadith. He says that this hadith is a foundation from the foundations of Islam. And it is a qaida, a principle, azim, a great principle from, asu, from the, uh, basically the qawaid fiqiyya, the, the qawaid uh, fiqh principles. And he says, and it is that something that we judge something in accordance with it remaining as it is in its foundation until we are certain otherwise. And, and doubtfulness does not harm, uh, doubtfulness that, that comes about does not harm uh, that asal. Okay, let's make sure that this is clear. So this means that one of the qa'id, and maybe this is a qa'id that comes under this principle, is that the asl of something, the foundation, is that things are in its natural state or according to its natural um, substance or principle, uh, and nothing removes it from that status except with certainty. So meaning doubtfulness doesn't remove it. For example, if you are on, you have wudu. You're certain you made wudu for dhuhr. And Salat al-Asr has come in. But you remember for sure you made wudu for dhuhr. And you're doubtful of whether you broke your wudu or not. You're doubtful. That's the shak. That's the doubt. But you, you have yaqeen that you made wudu. You have certainty that you made wudu. Then, the asl is, is that something remains in its state unless something removes it with certainty. So you are certain that you are on wudu, but you doubt that you broke your wudu. So that means you're on wudu. Because it remains in its asl. It remains in its uh, the state that it is. And likewise, this even, this principle, and that's why you see the importance of these principles, is this principle even applies to something, a, a mas'ala as deep as takfir. Because the asl of a Muslim is that they are a Muslim, that they're on their Islam. And you cannot make takfir about something doubtful. So you can't remove someone's Islam and say, oh, he's a disbeliever and let's take, you know, his wealth and he's no longer sacred and he has a divorce his wife. You can, those ahkam only remove, can only be removed with certainty. I hope that's clear. So the asal of something is that it remains in its state unless you have certainty to remove it from its state. So doubtfulness does not harm it. This is the whole point and important principle of this qaida. Uh, and then also in Sahihain, and this will clarify for us a bit more, uh, in the hadith, uh, an Abdullah bin Zayd, radiyallahu ta'anu, qal, shukiya la nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rajilu yukhayilu ilayhi anhu yajid shay fi salat. Qal, la yansaraf hatta yasma'a sawtan, o yajid arrihan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and in another authentic hadith that you'll find in, I believe, in Bukhari and Muslim, that, yeah, as he said, well, fi sahihain, it's in uh, Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Zayd, radiyallahu ta'an, that he said that a man came complaining to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he complained that he, you know, he was thinking that something was wrong with his salat, meaning he thought he passed gas. 
And the Prophet ﷺ gave him this Qaida Azim, Qaida Azima, this very major principle which we need to know, and this is the principle that we're studying. The Prophet ﷺ, and this is special, uh, pertaining to the prayer, he said, Qal la yansaraf, don't leave the prayer until you hear something or you smell something. So that gives us the dawabit. It gives us the criterion. So this is very important. If you know that, you can make, I don't like to use the word fatwa, but it is a fatwa about if someone asks you about the prayer or even yourself, you doubt, look to what you were certain about. If you were certain you were on wudu, someone comes up to you and they say, I don't know if I prayed with wudu or not. Because there are people who have this doubt. Many people. Some people, they have it from doubtfulness. Some people, maybe they have the ayin. Some people, the jinn. All kind of things that, or some people, they may have some mental stability. Or some people are just affected by waswas. Those, there's many reasons uh, people can be plagued with this. Or it can just be for forgetfulness. But if you have this principle and you understand this principle, you can make a judgment about their prayer. And you can make a judgment about your prayer to know whether you have wudu or not. So you mabni ala yaqeen. You build everything on yaqeen, on certainty, not on doubt. If you know that you had wudu, and you doubt, you can't remember exactly if you broke your wudu, then you're on wudu. If you know you were on wudu, and then you know for sure you made uh, a hadith, of course, you passed gas, well then of course you have yaqeen. So then you don't have to have, you shouldn't have doubt whether you can pray or not because you know for sure you mabni ala yaqeen. You build it on what is certain and you're certain that you broke your wudu. Okay, so that I hope that that's clear and clear uh, clear for us, and that uh, we can look at that for so many Messiah in the Deen. And another evidence for this kaida is uh, what was narrated in Sahih Muslim uh, on Abi Sa'id al Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala. Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Ida shaka ahadakum fi salatihi, falam falam yadri kam salla." الثلاثين أو أربعين، فليطرح الشك وليبني على ما ما يستيقن. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said إلى آخر الحديث. And the hadith has more left, but that's what we want to really look at is this portion of the hadith. This lets us know, and this is an it affirms for us this guide, this principle. It's evidence for this principle. So the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said. As reported by Abu Sa'id al Khudri, he said that if one of you doubts about his prayer, so this will let you know, this gives you the qaida for your salat. He said, if one of you doubts about uh, his, his or her prayer, you know, during the salat, uh, and, they, or the, and they don't know how many rakats they prayed, was it three or four? then do not follow the doubtfulness, that which you have doubt about, and build upon what you are certain of. In that mas'ala, you would look at, for sure you know you prayed three. For sure. Your doubt, your shuck comes in what? With four. You're not sure if you prayed four or not. So then you build on that which is certain, which is three. So then you pray the fourth. And then you pray uh, Sajjit al-Saho at the end of your prayer. So that shows us a habit of It gives us that, that qa'ida in practice. And that can help you uh, with many masail. So the meaning of this principle is that Doubtfulness does not remove that which is certain. So when we're certain about something, doubtfulness does not remove that certainty. And also, as we mentioned, that from the Qawaid and Asul is that things remain on that which they are in their Asul. As the scholars mentioned, Al-Asul بقى ما كان على ما كان. 
meaning the usul of something is that it stays in its, its, it remains in its original state until you're certain that it is changed. Another example, just to make that clear for us, related to this principle, for example, if you have, you have water, okay, you have a, a tub full of water and you want to make wudu, or some body of water and you want to make wudu, and you have some doubt about it. You, you doubt that maybe someone might have urinated in it, in it or some urine or some najasa may have fallen into it, may have changed it. This, you know, all of these things, which are doubt. All of those are shuck. They're all built upon doubtfulness. Going back to the qaida, the qaida far'in, the, 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 the principle which is under the main principle, which is that we just mentioned, al-asl baqa ma kana ala ma kan. The origin of something is that it remains in its original status, is that it remains in its original status. Unless, of course, something uh, changes that with certainty, not with doubt. So I think that uh, should be clear for us in relation to this, this qaida. As another great benefit that the ulama mentioned, just we'll quickly go through this so that way we have an idea of some very important terminologies. And these are five different terminologies and they refer to knowledge or they refer to the various ways of uh, intellectual capacity. So you may say it's, a, it's the various types of knowledge or you may refer to it as the different ways, uh, the different levels of intellectual capacity. The first thing is yaqeen, is certainty. So that way we have an idea about these terms. Certainty, wuhuwa jazam al-qalb mal istinad ila dalil al-qat'i. Certainty, it is to have your heart in, uh, when you're certain about something, it means that your heart fully believes this thing and it is, it comes from evidence. Uh, evidence, sharia evidence, meaning the Quran and the Sunnah. Knowledge that's, you know, not debatable. You know, uh, either an authentic hadith or the Quran. And that, something like that, we call that yaqeen. You are certain without doubt. You, your iman, your belief, and your intellect, intellect accepts that bil yaqeen. You know, with, with complete certainty. That's certainty. The second terminology is ittiqad. So this has to do with ittiqad or aqidah in creed. And this is to have a belief in the heart, this strong belief, without it necessarily going back, uh, you, you having the evidence or the delil, okay? And the scholars mentioned that this is, is something which you might find amongst the awam or the general Muslims. For example, they believe, they, they believe, they may not know the hadith, they may not know the ayat, but they believe certain uh, things in aqidah or creed, uh, and they believe it with certainty, even though they don't know the evidence even though they don't know the evidence. They heard it from one of the trustworthy scholars and they believe it, even though they do not know the dalil. So that's the difference between yaqeen. Yaqeen, you know the evidence as well. And you have the certainty, no doubt. And ittiqad, when you believe something from your aqidah, this is a type of certainty or a type of belief, but that you don't have with the, the evidence necessarily. The third level is van, what we've been talking about. And van, this is uh, to have an overwhelming opinion about something. For example, if you have uh, two things, you know, it's either halal or haram or whatever the case may be or you have learned about the water for example going back to the example of water we mentioned is it pure or is it unpure you have then about this uh and so this then that means you believe one view is stronger than the other you're not totally sure 
but you're inclined, according to your view, that one is stronger than the other. You believe more so that this water is pure, even though there might you might have a little doubt. Okay? That is fun. The next level is this doubtfulness. Shuck is doubtfulness. And that means that you have two two uh, different affairs or two different things. For example, as we mentioned, whether it's halal or haram or whether it's pure or unpure, and your your view on that it is that it's the same. You don't you're you're not inclined to either one. You don't know if it's halal and you don't know if it's haram. You don't know if it is uh, pure or you don't know if it's impure. Your feelings about it it can go either way. And that's called shuck. That's the doubtfulness. And the last level is al-waham. Al-waham, this is that you are going, you is similar to the shuck, the doubtfulness, but you believe uh, one is less than the other. Okay, one, for example, you're inclined towards one a little bit more than the other, and even though you know one of them is correct, you know the correct view, but you, you have weakness. There's, there's some weakness there. Or you're inclined towards a correct, correct view, but there's some weakness there. I hope that that's clear. As far as the meaning of this qaida, of this principle, it refers to إِنَّ الْأَمْرِ مُتَيَقِّنْ ثُبُوتِهِ لَا يَرْتَفَعْ إِلَّا بِدَلِيلَ الْقَاطِعِ So this is very important. Uh, the meaning, the general meaning of this principle is that any issue or affair that you are sure about is not removed except for uh, clear, without doubt, evidence. And that goes back to what we were talking about. So, as we mentioned, uh, for example, we mentioned the example of the water, or uh, we're going to talk about some other examples. Uh, and also, related to this qaida, وَلَا يَحْكُمْ بِزَوَالِهِ الْمُجَرِّدْ الشَّكْ So, meaning that the fact that you have doubt about something does not change that thing from its origin, which you were certain about. And we mentioned the example of one's prayer. We mentioned the example of water or whether a person has wudu. If a person is for sure, they remember they made wudu, but now they have doubt. Did they break their tahara or not? That's an example. What do we build upon? We build upon the asal is that they made wudu and they remember that they made wudu and they're doubting that they broke their wudu. So we go back to that person is on wudu. Let's look at a couple of quick examples before we wrap up this qaida. And one uh, is, for example, one of the uh, issues that uh, falls under this principle is, for example, if uh, a man and a woman, they get married, nikah, with a sound marital contract, then there is some doubt with regards to talaq. Is she divorced or not? Some, something doubtful comes up and, you know, they're doubting whether they're divorced or not. So, because of that, that shuk, that means their nikah, their nikah, bak, their nikah remains. They're still married. So, doubtfulness doesn't remove that asl. And as we mentioned the issue of takfir earlier, that this is also another thing. If we affirm that someone is a Muslim, they became a Muslim. Or that they were, you know, raised a Muslim, they're a Muslim. You know, we know them to be a Muslim. We do not, we cannot make a judgment to remove their Islam except with clear, undebatable evidence. Indisputable evidence. 
So that's very important because so many of the youth want to indulge in takfir. They want to get involved in these major masail. These are big, big, big issues that we shouldn't even be discussing. But everyone has an opinion about this ruler and that ruler and this person and this person. Okay? But however, they don't have any ta'seel. Ta'seel and masail. They don't have any foundation with regards to these issues. And again, going back to the Qaeda, that the uh, certainty is not removed by doubt. So if we're certain someone's a Muslim, then our doubtfulness, I don't know, he's kind of seems like he prays, or I don't know, he, you know, he may be doing this, he does this sin. Doubtfulness doesn't remove Islam. So that's a good reminder for us all because sometimes we fall short in, in, in our thoughts about others. And what affirms for us this uh, important principle, just some uh, a couple statements from Ahl al-Ilm, from uh, our Salaf, which illustrate, you know, uh, how Ahl al-Sunnah views this issue of takfir and how it's so serious uh, in a statement that Imam uh, Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani, he mentioned, he said, وَلَذِي يَنْبَغِي الْإِحْتِرَازِ عَنْ takfir." ما وجد إليه سبيلا فإن استباحة دماء المسلين المقرين بتوحيد خطأ وخطأ في ترك ألف كافر في الحياة أهون أهون من خطأ في سفك الدماء دم مسلم واحد That's a high-powered statement by Imam Ibn Hajr. He says this in uh, Fat al Bari, you'll find this. Imam uh, Ibn Hajar, he mentioned, he said, and what is absolutely necessary is that we are very, that people are very cautious and in not indulging in takfir, uh, if, if at all possible. Meaning, especially for the lay persons. Why are people who haven't studied and people who don't have, who maybe have read some things and had some things translated for them, and why are they making. Uh, uh, rulings of takfir on people, okay? So Ibn Hajar, he mentions, he said uh, that, you know, people should be away from this as, as long as they're able, meaning to strive your best not to even involve yourself in the issue of takfir, unless you have the, the tools to do so, which is al. And then he says, for verily, to make the people who pray and who believe in tawheed Making their blood lawful is a, a mistake. You know, this is a serious mistake. And a mis the mistake of leaving a thousand disbelievers in life is less than the mistake of spilling the blood of one Muslim. Okay? So here he's showing how serious and how important it is to be away from and going against this Qaeda of removing that which is we're certain about, that so-and-so is a Muslim, removing it with something doubtful, something that you believe they've done. You believe they've fallen out of the fold of Islam because you read uh, a fatwa or you read... Um, something you don't have any ta'seel, you don't know that the scholars Qadim and the Salaf differed over it and some viewed it as sinful, some later scholars made, made takfir of this same point, but the people don't know this, they don't have the, the tools and the ilm, and they should not be, from taqwa, they should not be even involved in those things, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad.